Let's see how these go. Oh, that's what's tough, too. You have, you have, like, different bombs for each of these fights, and you have to, like, not only figure out which ones they are and how to best use them. Man, this is going to be so bad. I hate saying that, but it is. You can get a lot of hits in if like you use it at the right time, but that's the problem. You also only get like one at a time. Okay, got King Knight. For that, it's just a matter of finding the best way to use the Shockwave so you can get like more than like two hits in in one throw. Once you get a feel for that, it's not really too bad. Spectre, what do we gotta do for this one? Again, it all depends on which bombs we get. That's the big one. Oh man, and these are the... You can see these ones kind of helping. Oh, okay, they float up. Okay, so that, I, that's not as bad as I thought. So if I like stand here, for example. Okay, not quite. That's actually pretty that's actually pretty good. The problem is like I can't use that strategy for time's sake. Yeah, time's almost out. Got him! Oh my god. I feel like I got really lucky in that attempt. I mean, not even just because there's only one second left, but even then. Ugh. Okay, got that one done. Um, I'm going to do one more. Let's do... Oh, Shovel Knight. Yeah, sure, let's do it. 
Hope we don't get like really terrible things for this one. I feel like I had a great start to that, but then he just really just started getting me there. Again, like, why can't I get him stun locked like I did, like, a little bit ago? <clears throat> I feel like the best thing you can do with Shovel Knight is just get him stun locked. He will use like the I core and stuff, which is obnoxious. But if you get him like right here. situation like that yeah he's pretty easy but that's the problem you gotta get him into a situation like that okay well I'm halfway through Plague Knights and 40% through all of them I'm gonna go ahead and stop here um, again I'm not sure where the videos are gonna end but I'll figure out the proper stop points so this video may not be over I'm just finished with this session, so we'll keep on working on medals later. Okay guys, I am back for more of the Plague Knight challenges. We are currently working on the rematches. We've done three of them, but we still have 13 more to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this. The first one we have here is Treasure Knights. Uh, Treasure Knight isn't too bad. Um, as you can see, you get uh, this little shield projectile, which you can kind of use. And it actually honestly works pretty well because there's a lot of aspects of Treasure Knight where you can kind of get like right next to him without actually like needing to like directly make contact with him. And there's so much lag with his moves that it's actually fairly easy to get those hits on. So that's actually a fairly easy challenge just uh, due to the equipment that you give you that they give you for that one. Uh, so after that one, we're gonna go right into Mole Knight. And if you haven't told, uh, if you haven't been able to tell. Um, from this video yet. Um, this is going to be post commentary for the rest of this and probably for the rest of challenge mode too. I think that for this mode in particular because there's going to be so much cut footage I think it just makes more sense to show the successful attempts and uh, do commentary this way. This way I'm like you know not frustrated after doing a challenge multiple times. I, th I think it just honestly makes more sense in my own honest opinion so that's what we're going to do. Um, so as far as Mole Knight is concerned, um, he's not really too bad either. The one challenge, though, is the time limit. You have to really use this blast effectively, and I actually got really lucky right there, because I ran out of time just as I killed him. So it actually showed the miss on screen, but because the gameplay was still going on, it still counted. Uh, that's one thing you can kind of use, you know, use to your advantage. If it looks like uh, you're going to run out of time... Uh, try to just go as aggressive as you can. Who knows, you might be able to get like a hit or two in um, before the uh, challenge actually ends. 
Uh, so that was actually a very, very tight win right there, but I did make it work, so that's all that really matters. Uh, so here for Tinker Knight, or Ten Knight, no, no, it's Tinker Knight, I don't know. I, I don't know why I, could, I keep calling him Ten Knight, but it is definitely Tinker Knight. Um, but anyway, um, this is actually an interesting one because of the relic that they give you. Uh, notice how we only have one hit. Well, if we use the uh, um, relic that we're given... I keep forgetting what they're called in Plague Knight's campaign. They're not called relics. Um, but either way, if you get if you use the, the item that you're given for this, you can actually gain some of your uh, health back, which is kind of neat. So the game kind of expects you to use that to kind of stay alive during this fight. And I guess they just did it just so you could actually do a challenge that actually like required that item. Because otherwise, I guess there wouldn't really be much of a purpose for that, I guess. And as far as uh, this phase, this phase is honestly not too bad. Um, you have to stand at a very specific point on his robot to hit him. But once you find that place, you can kind of just get hits in uh, pretty regularly. So it's, it's honestly not too bad. As you can see, I am having like a little bit of difficulty getting the hits in though sometimes. That's just the way it is. And... Um, there we go. So yeah, there we go. Uh, Tinker Knight is not too bad either. Once you kind of get your health back to max, you can just kind of use the item as you see fit, and it's a pretty, pretty standard and normal fight at that point. Uh, so next up we have, I believe, Propeller Knight, and this one was actually a bit of a challenge. Um... Honestly, some of the biggest challenges with uh, Plague Knight's missions uh, is just, like, the projectiles that they give you. You, like, really have to use the uh, projectiles pretty effectively, I think. So it can, it can be, honestly, kind of annoying and kind of uh, difficult to uh, kind of use them in that fashion. Um, I, I kind of think the thing they really want you to use, though, is the claw swipe. Because you can actually get, uh, like, multiple hits if you use that. So like right here you can use the projectile, get a few hits, and then just probably just like claw swipe them for the rest of the match right here. Actually made that and cut that kind of close, but uh, that's basically all you have to do for that one. So yeah, it's, it's really just kind of like trying to make use of the equipment that they give you. And usually there is like, you know, they made the challenge for a reason. So you could actually notice those things and kind of use those to your advantages. Uh, this one's another one that's actually fairly tricky because the bombs are very slow. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on with uh, Polar Knight with um, his own attacks. So you kind of have to use that to your advantage. And uh, there's also the uh, um, item that you're given too. This uh, Shroud Cloud, as I like to call it. And that's kind of what you need to do right there, is like when the uh, ground is like made up of a lot of spikes, you need to use the Shroud Cloud, kind of get close, and then just pile the explosions on him. You have to get kind of lucky that like, you know, he doesn't like just jump out of the way while you're hitting him, but if you uh, keep at it, you should be able to get it without too many issues. Um, so next we're going to move on to Black Knight. Uh, we don't have... well, okay, we have a couple left. I keep forgetting that they always stick the adventurer boss fights before they did do like the like absolute end game boss fights. Uh, so yeah, shovel knight, um, or not shovel knight, uh, black knight. He has a shovel. I'm not wrong. He is a shovel knight, just not the shovel knight. Uh, so yeah, this one's kind of interesting. Um, you, like I, I feel like I was using that and didn't really get as much damage in as I was kind of hoping to. You just kind of have to hope that uh, he kind of flies into your uh, bomb projectiles and you can get like a couple of good hits in because of that. Actually, got, Oh, I actually got really lucky right there. That he uh, landed on one and then like got knocked back into another one. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of persistence, even if there's a boss fight that you think that uh, 
is really really hard just keep doing it uh, keep trying to notice certain patterns and kind of use those patterns to your advantage uh, this fight was honestly like probably one of the harder ones of the Plague Knight battles, if I'm being honest. Which is weird, because I never really saw Reese as that dangerous of an opponent. Um, you kind of have to really get a feel for his movements. Like whenever he jumps, like you need to move back just a little bit so you get out of the way. And then you can kind of get a little bit of aggress aggression on him, and then get some hits in. And there is also a way you can kind of stun lock him as well. And that's another thing you can kind of do to help yourself out in this fight. Just get those little stun locks in and ultimately find that one blow that you need to knock them out. But yeah, I honestly had a little bit of trouble with that one. And honestly, the ability they give you, the item that they give you, I didn't really see much of a practical purpose for that. That's the one that makes you go fast, so I really didn't see a reason to use that if I'm being honest. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the Baz. Uh, the Baz is another one where it's like, I feel like they give you bombs that wouldn't really be too helpful. Well, actually, I don't know. The thing with Baz is if you, like, find a good place to put the bombs, like, they'll just home in on them, and that's kind of, I guess, what the, the main idea of that is. It's so, like, right there, he took in a couple of hits, which is kind of nice. Also, just kind of keep your distance from them kind of make him come towards you. That's one thing I kind of noticed helped quite a bit. And I got kind of lucky right there, but hey. <laughs> Sometimes all you need is a little bit of luck to beat these, and uh, beat these effectively. So now that we're done with the Baz, we move on to another tough adventure. We have Mr. Hats. Oh, Mr. Hat. Uh, this guy... This one, the challenge is the equipment you're given for this one. Um, you can't really uh, spam too many bombs because uh, but you can not You can only use two at a time. And uh, you can't throw more until like all the projectiles disappear off screen. Uh, in addition to that, you have the float or the burst, which has the little snowflakes, which the snowflakes do damage. So you kind of have to find a way to use kind of both of them at the same time. And sometimes you can like manipulate your movements so you can get like um, him basically walking into a series of snowflakes. That's how I was ultimately able to do this, if I'm being honest. And right there, I actually took a death, but uh, was fortunately saved by my projectile still moving. Uh, did the last hit on him and... Thankfully, I was able to actually beat the challenge that way, but yeah, that was a pretty difficult one as well um, as we're moving through the rest of these. Uh, next up, we have the Phantom Striker. The Phantom Striker, I think, is one of the easier ones. Like, he's the easiest of the adventurers, I think, for sure. And, like, I think they actually give you, like, a pretty decent uh, bomb and fuse for this as well. Oh, oh yeah, like, any any bomb that has, like, um, explosions that last on screen for a bit, oh my god, they're life-saving, they can just do so much damage. Yeah, that was, man, that was painfully easy. <laughs> I still had half my health left, too, so yeah, that one was a pretty simple one, if I'm being honest. But hey, I mean, the other ones gave me trouble, so it's nice that, you know, one of them was at least kind of generous to me. Uh, so now we have the Enchantress. This was one that I was actually kind of fearing. Um, it didn't take me as long as I thought it would, but, um, it's, you know, I still wouldn't say it's easy by any means. The problem with the Enchantress is when she goes down to the bottom of the screen, it's just really annoying to deal with her when she does that because you have to wait for a bit, and, you know, it is possible to get hits in on her. Like, you, know, you have the bomb fish, which I guess is kind of the developer's justification for this fight being here, but uh, honestly, if you just get a lot of damage in on her early, and uh, when she comes back up, you can actually get more damage in. Like, I actually got some good hits right there, and I, I was actually surprised. Oh my god, she's already at one health left. <laughs> so I just threw a fish bomb, got her, and yeah, that's, uh, that's that. 
But we still have two bosses remaining, so it's not over just yet. First we have the Plague of Shadows. N not the entire expansion. Uh, this is the, literally the boss's name. Um, for this one, this one took me a while as well. Um, what's difficult about this one is just he just keeps moving around. <laughs> he keeps moving around, he has projectiles going along, so sometimes it can be kind of hard to... Uh, deal with those, uh, but you do have bombs, you do have, uh, you have your own advantages, you just have to kind of get a feel for it, and especially get a feel for his jumps. Once you kind of get the pattern for his jumps, you can kind of surprise him a bit, because after he finishes jumping around, he kind of stays in one place for a bit, so you can kind of use that to kind of get some hits on him. And the final boss, we have the Corrupted Essence. <clears throat> this one's interesting. Um, because um, the bombs you get suck, but uh, there's a reason they give you these bombs. Because um, you see that thing that the uh, essence is holding on to, that little orb thing? Um, you can actually break that, and that'll actually get... Uh, not only will it get the, um, the giant Plague Knight on the ground, but it'll also keep his mouth open for a bit. So you're supposed to kind of wreck that machine, wait for him to come down, and then just pile all the hits into his mouth. That That's honestly what you're supposed to do. Like, And I had no idea that was even a thing from the uh, real fight, because I just obviously, like, I used the bomb attack, or the, um, the bomb relic, and I also used, like, shots that arced up so they'd actually hit his mouth easier, so... Yeah, you can actually, uh, beat that boss in a way I honestly didn't even expect. Um, but yeah, that's actually going to do it for all of the Plague Knight rematches. I'm going to go ahead and end this video, and I will see you guys next time when we uh, start working on the Spectre Knight challenges. So, I will see you guys then.